a professor of political science at Loyola University Chicago. I've worked with Paul Rusesa Begina and his foundation for over 15 years now, and have now spent uh, nearly the last two months working with his family and the team to free Paul from his confinement in Rwanda. A brief recap before we go to the lawyers today. After being kidnapped in Dubai, Paul has now been under illegal arrest in Rwanda for 53 days. Sadly, his family still has limited and heavily monitored communication with Paul. In addition, his team of lawyers are just beginning to get access to Paul, which under international law should have happened on day one of his arrest. Several members of Paul's legal team are here with us today to talk about the situation and provide updates on what has been happening on the legal front over the last 10 days. I'd like to be, begin by introducing Peter Robinson, one of Paul's American lawyers, who is acting as the lead lawyer on our legal team to discuss the case and put this into context. Peter. Thank you, Brian. I'm Peter Robinson. I'm a former assistant United States attorney and have been defending accused persons at international criminal courts and tribunals for the past 20 years, including at the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda. I'm serving as lead counsel for the team of lawyers retained by the family of Paul Rosasa Begina to defend him following his illegal transfer to Rwanda. Our team includes lawyers from Rwanda, Belgium, Australia, Canada, and the United States. As you know, Paul Rusasa Begina was taken to Rwanda against his will on August 29th in violation of international law. Instead of presenting a request for extradition or deportation to the United States or Belgium, the Rwandan government took Paul Rusasa Begina to Rwanda by extrajudicial rendition. Once they arrested Paul in Kigali, the Rwandan government kept him tied, bound, and blindfolded for three days before parading him to the news media. Then they provided him with their own defense lawyers. Those of us real lawyers who have been tasked by the family to defend Paul Rusasa Begina have watched in agony as his fake lawyers appeared with Paul in court. They failed to challenge his illegal rendition to Rwanda and they made perfunctory arguments for his provisional release without mentioning his vulnerability to COVID-19, a circumstance that has resulted in the release of thousands of prisoners worldwide during this pandemic. Paul is 66 years old and has heart disease and hypertension. It has now been more than 50 days since Paul was arrested in Rwanda and the government continues to block our team from defending Paul Rusasa Begina. When we have sought access to Paul, the Rwandan government has consistently refused on the ground that Paul has never requested to be represented by the lawyers chosen by his family. This is not the case. Paul has told his family, including his daughter Anais, that he has requested to be defended by the team of lawyers led in Rwanda by Gatera Gashambana, Vincent Lurkan, and Philippe La Rochelle. Gatera Gashambana is the former president of the Rwandan Bar Association. He has defended the last two of President Paul Kagame's political opponents who were imprisoned, Victoire Ingaberi and Diane Regara. He has the courage and the experience to fight for his clients, even in the courts of Rwanda. Vincent Lercan is a lawyer from Belgium who has been representing Paul Rusasa Begina on the very same charges that the Rwandans asked the Belgian authorities to investigate. He has a wealth of experience in international human rights and won acquittals for two Rwandans, a former governor, Emmanuel Bagambiki, and the former police commander, Augustin Ndidliamana, at the United Nations Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda. Philippe La Rochelle is a lawyer from Canada who has also defended clients at the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda and won the acquittal of Jacques Mungawariri, a Rwandan man prosecuted in Canada for alleged crimes during the Rwandan genocide. He is currently in Arusha, Tanzania, where he's about to start a trial defending a Rwandan charged with obstruction of justice. 
We don't understand why the Rwandan government is burdening its taxpayers with paying the legal fees of these government-sponsored lawyers when Mr. Rusasa Begina has lawyers ready, willing, and able to defend him at his own expense. The only explanation for this is that they want to control all aspects of the proceedings, the judge, the prosecutor, and even the defense counsel. We are asking the United States, Belgium, and the European Union not to stand by while fundamental rights of its citizen and residents are being violated. Rwanda must respect international law by returning Paul Rusesa Begina to the United States or Belgium. Thereafter, it's free to make a proper request for his transfer to Rwanda via extradition or deportation, or to have him prosecuted in Belgium. By illegally transferring him to Rwanda and continuing to deny him his right to counsel of his choice, the Rwandan authorities have shown that they cannot be trusted to provide a fair trial for Paul Rusesa Begina. I will now turn this over to Vincent, Philippe, and Anais to tell you firsthand the efforts that have been made to provide Paul with legal representation and the obstacles that they have faced. Anais? Or perhaps we can go to Vincent first. I see you've joined us, Vincent. Vincent, if you could please give us an update on um, what's happened for with starting with your trip to Kigali, and Philippe will be translating for Vincent. Philippe, if you can ask Monsieur Lurkin. Yes, uh, Vincent. Donc, comme on faisait à, à Rouge à l'époque, donc des phrases. Euh, pas trop longue pour que je puisse euh, traduire intégralement, on va dire. Et voilà, la question est de savoir pourquoi est-ce que l'État rwandais ne veut pas que l'avocat puisse voir son client. Et donc, la question qui se pose, c'est de savoir de quoi ils ont peur. L'issue est de savoir pourquoi Rwanda ne veut pas que Paul soit avec le lawyer de son choix. De quoi ont-ils peur? What are they afraid of? Je vais vous raconter en quelques mots le, le, notre voyage et Philippe a participé euh, en grande partie à celui-ci. Pour essayer de, de, de vous démontrer que la seule, le seul élément qui manque encore dans ce dossier, c'est la parole de Paul Roussessa Bagina. I will tell you what happened when I was in Kigali, and I was myself present um, during some of uh, Vincent's stay in Kigali to try to understand why Paul is denied a safe in this. Donc, quand on est arrivé à l'aéroport, déjà on a eu euh, une heure et demie d'interrogation parce que visiblement être avocat est un, un gros mot au Rwanda. If we Philippe, we may need to ask you to turn off your camera, please, just to say band. We were interrogated for an hour and a half because it's being a lawyer is already a problem. Yep. If you could briefly restate that, we lost you for a moment. Be, be Il y a des problèmes. Moi, je n'entends plus. Moi, j'entends. Voilà, on peut continuer parce que moi, j'entends plus. Moi, je suis. So, already, already when you arrived. So, uh, Vincent was interrogated for an hour and a half when he arrived in Rwanda. Apparently, um, being a lawyer seems to be a problem over there. Quand on arrive à la douane, on vous demande quel est votre nom, quelle est votre profession. Et quand on a dit que l'on était avocat de euh, Paul Rousset-Sapagina, directement, on vous a repoussé hors de la file et on a attendu une heure et demie avant quand même de vous laisser passer. So when I arrived at the custom, I stated my name and my profession. I said I was a lawyer. And what the, that was sufficient to um, have me kicked out of the lineup and put aside for an hour and a half 
for examination. Ça, évidemment, ce n'est pas grave, mais l'ensemble du climat de la semaine qu'on va passer au Rwanda est un peu ce climat de, de suspicion sur le fait de dire euh, Rosé Sabagina, c'est un nom dont on ne doit pas parler au Rwanda. So being put aside for an hour and a half doesn't matter in itself, but what I learned from this is that it seems that Rousset Sabagina is a name that cannot be um, said in Rwanda. Moi, je suis un avocat belge. I'm a Belgian lawyer. Dans, dans le cadre d'une procédure belge. And I, I already represent him in Belgium, so I was going to see him in Rwanda within the framework of uh, my case in Belgium, where I, Avec where, un juge d'instruction belge. Where I already represent Rousset Sabagina. There is an, Avec a un judge juge d'instruction belge et un procureur belge. So there is a judge in Belgium, there is a prosecutor in Belgium. Pourquoi est-ce que l'avocat belge de l'accusé qui est belge aussi puisque M. Roussi Sabagina la nationalité belge Why is a Belgian lawyer of a Belgian citizen because Mr. Roussi Sabagina is a Belgian citizen ne pourrait pas voir son avocat is Why is Mr. Mr. Roussi Sabagina prohibited from seeing his lawyer, Maître Lurkin? D'autant plus que la procédure en Belgique a été demandée par les autorités judiciaires rwandaises. And it's worth outlining that the, the procedure in Belgium was started at the request of the Rwandan authorities. Ça fait près de deux ans qu'on essaye, qu'on interroge M. Roussi Sabagina en Belgique et que je l'assiste pour essayer de prouver qu'il est coupable de quelque chose. It's for for two years now, the Belgium authorities have been examining Mr. Rousset Sabagina to try to demonstrate that he did something wrong. And I was I have been assisting him throughout this process. La dernière audition qu'on a eu devant les enquêteurs belges participait également le procureur général de Kigali et son adjoint. During the last of this hearing, the attorney general of Rwanda and his prosecutor uh, joint were present during the examination of Mr. Prosecutor. The, well, the, the prosecutor of um, there was a prosecutor from Kigali. Et ensemble, avec la justice belge, ils interrogeaient M. Roussi Sabagina. And together, Anaïs, can you... They, together with the Belgian authorities, they were examining M. Roussi Sabagina. Et à ce moment-là, et c'est la dernière fois que je l'avais vu ici en Belgique, M. Roussi Sabagina a dit « Je ne répondrai pas à vos questions » au euh, procureur rwandais parce que ces gens-là, a-t-il dit, ils veulent me tuer. During the last of these examination, which is the last occasion where Mr. Lurkin uh, had the chance to see Rousset Sabagina, the prosecutor from Rwanda was trying to ask questions to Mr. Rousset Sabagina. And Mr. Mr. Rousset Sabagina answered them, I will not answer your questions because I know you want to kill me. Heureusement, il n'est pas mort, mais ils l'ont quand même enlevé. So, thank God, he's not dead, but he was nevertheless abducted. Donc, on assiste à un procès qui est un procès uniquement belge, et la seule chose que l'on doit avoir pour voir M. Roussi Sabagina, c'est une attestation du bâtonnier du Rwanda, Kava Uganda, pour me permettre d'aller le voir à la prison. This is, this is, we will not say enough that this is a Belgian procedure. And this is in the context of that Belgian procedure that Mr. Lurkin, Maître Lurkin, was trying to see Mr. Roussi Sabagina in Rwanda. 
And apparently the only thing that is necessary is an authorization from the head of the Kigali Bar Association, Mr. Kavura Ganda. C'est une des choses les plus inacceptables, tant pour Philippe que pour moi, qui est le fait que celui qui a refusé de nous permettre d'aller voir Paul Rousset Sabagina, c'est un de nos confrères, le bâtonnier de Kigali. It is, it is totally unacceptable that the person who is blocking attempts by Maître Lurquin and myself to see Mr. Rousset Sabagina is actually a lawyer from the bar of Belgium, of Brussels in Belgium. Nous avons attendu pendant six jours. We waited for six days. Mais entre temps, il y a quand même des choses positives qui sont passées. Despite this long um, period of waiting, positive things nevertheless happened. La première chose, c'est que le juge d'instruction belge m'a permis d'avoir la copie du dossier de M. Roussissa Bagina, alors que vous savez que en Belgique, l'instruction est secrète, est secrète. Nous avons the obtenu first, la copie de son dossier. The first positive um, thing that happened is that the judge d'instruction in Belgium allowed Maître Lurquin to have access to the case file, despite the fact that normally these case files in Belgium are completely confidential. La seconde chose positive, c'est que nous avons obtenu la copie du dossier rwandais de M. Roussissa Bagina, qui est en train d'arriver normalement ici en Belgique. The second positive outcome is that we managed to secure the Rwandan file of Mr. Roussessa Bagina, and we are hoping to get it soon here in Belgium. Et la troisième chose, c'est que le bâtonnier Gatera est allé à la prison, a vu M. Roussessa Bagina, et M. Roussessa Bagina a écrit une lettre authentifiée comme quoi le bâtonnier Gatera et moi-même étions ses conseils. The third positive outcome is that Mr. Gatera, who, is, who, who has been a bâtonnier of uh, the Kigali Bar Association in the past, has managed to meet with Mr. Rousse Sabagina and he has obtained a stamped letter certifying that Maître Gatera and Maître Lurquin are Mr. Rousse Sabagina's appointed counsels. Un des éléments quand même essentiels de la défense, c'est le choix du conseil par l'accusé, ce que Rosé Sabagina n'a jamais eu. So, one of the most important components of the of a full defense is to be able and to be at liberty to appoint the counsel of one's choice. And Mr. Rosé Sabagina has been denied that right for too long a time. Alors, je vous avoue que je suis assez étonné de la position du bâtonnier Kavaruganda de Kigali, parce que lui, sa solution, c'était la fuite. Il a disparu. The, the attitude of Kavaruganda is actually very surprising because he has effectively disappeared since uh, Maître Lurquin has been trying to get a hold of him to obtain the necessary authorization to be able to visit Mr. Rousse Sabagina. Je crois que c'est un élément important aussi avec euh, Maître La Rochelle. On a pu montrer qu'on n'avait pas peur des autorités du Rwanda. That's a, it's, a, it's actually an important part of it is that we were able to show that we do not fear the Rwandan authorities. Aujourd'hui, j'ai demandé aux autorités belges de faire en sorte que la commission rogatoire qui devrait partir de Belgique l'on puisse en faire partie. Today, I have asked the Belgian authorities to be, um, to be a member or to be included in the rogatory commission that, um, that is ordered by the Belgian authorities. Il n'est pas possible dans le débat judiciaire que vous n'ayez qu'un juge, un procureur, un procureur du Rwanda et que l'avocat soit exclu de ce débat judiciaire. Et donc, je crois effectivement que dans une quinzaine de jours, on va pouvoir retourner au Rwanda, mais là pour revoir Paul Rousse et Sabagina. So, it is unacceptable. It would be unacceptable 
that a rogatory commission within the framework of the, of the Belgian procedure takes place only in presence of the judge, the prosecutor, the, prosecu the Belgian prosecutor, the Rwandan prosecutor, without Mr. Rousse Sabagina having the chance to be assisted by the lawyer of his choice. Et donc, je pense que, effectivement, d'ici 15 jours, trois semaines, on pourra retourner au Rwanda avec la commission rogatoire, et là, on verra euh, Paul Rousse et Sabagina. So normally, that rogatory commission is um, set to leave in two weeks, and I should be a part of it, which would allow me to see Mr. Rousse Sabagina. Voilà, ma première intervention maintenant. Je vous écoute. That's it. I'm now listening to you. Thank you very much, uh, Monsieur Lacroix. Uh, Philippe, if we can ask you to give a little bit of an update too, since you were also in Kigali, and let us know the issues that you ran into in Kigali. Um, just to complete a little bit the, the picture that Vincent has described, I, I myself got to Kigali um, a week or 10 days before Vincent arrived in Kigali. I was going there as part of this uh, trial here in Arusha that Peter has mentioned earlier, but um, I was also going there and I made it clear when I arrived at the airport that I was going to meet, I was going to Rwanda to meet with Mr. Uh, Rousse Sabagina. So the, the reaction of the custom officer was to exactly like uh, what happened to Vincent, to um, put me, um, to ask me to leave the line and to wait for people um, because people would like to speak to me um, not mentioning what, what they wanted to discuss. Um, so I had to wait for an hour and a half. Somebody came and asked me a few questions about what exactly, who was the client and what I wanted to do. Um, Philippe, unfortunately, we're losing your audio. Brian, why don't you introduce Anais and we will come back to Philippe if his microphone comes back on. Great, thank you. Um, I'd like to ask Anais Kanimba. I was finally uh, uh, allowed through. I also had uh, for my mission uh, to enter Rwanda. So immediately after I entered Rwanda, I was... I'm sorry, am I... Back you, you, you cut it. You cut out several times, Philippe. Why don't we try it one more time? And if not, we'll go to Anais. If you can just briefly go from the beginning, we lost much of what you said. I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? We can. Oui. So I will, I'll try to be brief. Uh, I encountered the same difficulties as Vincent in trying to meet with Paul. I encountered the same difficulties with the batonnier. I may even managed to obtain a letter from my batonnier at, the, at their request. Uh, to ask the batonnier to allow me to meet with Mr. Rousse Sabagina. But just like Vincent, uh, the, the, the batonnier was nowhere to be found and I was not able, never able to actually uh, be able to meet with Mr. Rousse Sabagina during my stay in Rwanda. And um, I have another client, client that I was supposed to meet for whom I'm, I'm have, I have a standing authorization to meet with him in uh, the prison where he's detained. And although in the past I, I was always able to meet with him without any difficulties, this time around when we arrived at the prison to meet with him, we were told that, that the executive secretary of the bar has actually um, withdrawn my authorization I, and I was left before the prison gate not being allowed to meet with that person at all. So I don't know if it, it is because of Rousse Sabagina's case, but I can see that there is a certain uh, deterioration in allowing people in Rwanda to be able to meet with their um, lawyer of choice. This, this man I was supposed to meet as a case in Canada. The reason why I wanted to meet him, just like Saint, had nothing to do uh, with, uh, with uh, the case in Rwanda, but I was nevertheless completely blocked from having access to my client over there. So it, it's a real, um, it's a real, uh, it's, it's, it's really painful to see that. The, the possibility for one accused to see a lawyer of his choice should not be impeded in any manner whatsoever by the authorities of the country where he's detained. Thank you very much, Philippe. 
we'll now turn to Anais Kanimba, one of Paul's daughters, to um, give us a little bit of an update uh, just on what's been happening since the beginning to put everything into context and um, how the family has been feeling through the entire process. Anais, could you talk a little bit maybe about the legal process from the beginning and just update us from the family's perspective? Thank you, Brian. Um, yeah, so as we, as you heard, you know, we've really struggled to to get access for to dad and also for dad to have access to his lawyers. Um, and then, you know, as today we hear that the government has uh, given imposed uh, some lawyers on him, one of them called Mr. Rugaza. Uh, we, our family actually had tried several times to get access to that before Mr. Rugaza uh, did a press conference on September 6. Uh, so if you all remember, my father was taken to custody on August 31st. That day is still a nightmare for us. Um, and uh, since then, you know, that same week, we tried to call Rib several times to get access to dad. We also had our lawyer, Gatera Gashabana, uh, who's in Kigali, who tried to go see dad um, on Thursday and Friday of that very first week. So we tried countless times to see dad and to talk to him that first week, but we were denied access. And then to our surprise on Saturday, uh, September 5th, we saw a press conference in which a name called Mr. A man called Mr. Rugaza was my father's lawyer. Of course, we did not accept that because we had not spoken to him. Uh, we had, as you've seen, uh, Peter, Peter Robinson, Vincent Lurquin, Philippe Rochelle, and others ready to go and defend dad and ready to go bring him dad, bring him home. But we weren't able to do so because since that day, since the very first day that arrived in, in Kigali, since the very first day we've known that he's been in custody, we've had zero access to him from a legal perspective, um, which has um, made it very difficult for us to even speak to him on a personal level and have um, in conversations with him that we can feel that he's speaking freely. Our most of our conversations with him, we believe has always been with people in the background because our father you know, wasn't speaking his mind the way he could speak his mind in the past. So that's why we are really, really trying hard from our perspective to have him see the lawyer so we can finally speak to him. We can finally speak to dad freely until, to, until today we have not been able to do so. Thank you very much, Anise. If we can go back to Peter Robinson for a moment, if you might just be able to wrap things up for us, uh, Peter, before we go to Q&A. Thanks, Brian. And I want to thank uh, from the bottom of my heart, Vincent and Philippe for having the courage to go to Rwanda and taking all that time to try to provide a competent defense to Paul Rusa Begina. I think that's the kind of lawyering that makes all of us in the profession very proud to be serving our clients and seeing how our colleagues can, uh, at their own personal sacrifice, go beyond the call of duty to defend their clients. We hope that uh, someday we'll be in a courtroom with Paul Russes of Begina and he can have the semblance of a defense team. But as things stand right now, as you've heard all of the efforts that the family, Vincent and Philippe and Gutera have made, we still stand here as outsiders watching a show trial, which seems to be unfolding in a very unpleasant way. And so we hope that all of those of you listening will help us in trying to ensure that Paul has the lawyers of his choice and that he can be properly defended. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Oh, I'm sorry, kid. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, we are now going to open to any questions from the media. If you look on the bottom of your Zoom screen, there is a section entitled Q&A. Please type any questions in there. I think that our presentation today has shown that despite the fact that many well-meaning people and groups have called for uh, uh, the have called for a free and fair trial for Paul Rosessa Begina. I think everything that we've shown and told you today demonstrates that the likelihood of there being any kind of fair trial is zero to none. Um, we have our first question that I would like to um, that I would like to ask, and the um, the first question is. 
Is there any news from the Belgian government? Ton micro, Vincent. Maybe, uh, uh, maybe Karine and Vincent, you can answer that together and emphasize each other's answers. Karine, why don't you start and you can add Monsieur Lequin. Um, I think Mr. Monsieur Lequin should start and I'll add to his point. Non, je vous en prie. Mais donc au niveau du gouvernement belge, honnêtement, ça fait quand même quelques années qu'on qu circule un peu partout dans le monde ici. Visiblement, il y a quand même un n'appuie en tout cas des ambassades de Belgique. Je crois vraiment que... There is, a, there is support, plaît, there is, what we can see now is that there is some support from the Belgian embassies. Je crois que les autorités rwandaises ont franchi une, une ligne rouge qui n'est pas acceptable en Belgique. I believe that the Rwandan authorities have crossed a line, have crossed a red line that is, and that is completely unacceptable to the Belgian authorities. Alors, pour le moment, les autorités judiciaires ont décidé de faire une commission rogatoire, ce qui est quelque chose d'extrêmement positif, parce que si ils ne le faisaient pas, ça laissait aux Rwandais le fait de faire eux seuls le procès. So, for now, the Belgian authorities have decided to um, appoint a, a regulatory commission, which is very positive because not having done so would have sent would have sent the signal that um, the Rwandans were left on their own to do the trial. Mais il faut qu'ils acceptent que les avocats puissent participer à cette commission. S'ils n'acceptent pas, il y a des questions parlementaires qui seront posées la semaine prochaine au Parlement. But the Rwandans have to accept that the lawyers be part of the regulatory commission. Otherwise, questions will be asked in the, um, in the parliament. Donc, il faut que les autorités belges, pour le moment, ça fonctionne plus ou moins. Il faut aller au niveau de l'Europe. Ça me semble important. Et ce qui est important, c'est ce que vous faites aussi au niveau euh, des États-Unis. Il est clair que le, le, la pression qui se fait par rapport à M. Roussé-Sabagina est positive et est nécessaire pour faire pression sur le gouvernement belge. So, some, some pressure must be exerted on the Belgian government um, because it's, it, we don't think it is doing enough right now. So, pressure can be exercised at the level of Europe, pressure can be exercised at the level of the US, uh, every, everywhere where, because Paul is, a, is a, uh, also has a green card from the United States of America, so everywhere where we can add pressure to allow him to, and we're just at, at the stage of uh, have him being allowed to meet with the councils of his choice. We are not yet into the issues that may arise during the trial. I'm, I'm adding that, Mason did not say that, but I think it's worth uh, outlining. Thank you, Philippe and Vincent. Merci beaucoup. Um, I will also add that, of course, we have been applying pressure at every level in the United States, in Belgium, and in the EU. We have been communicating with the United States State Department, with the United States Congress, with the um, with different countries' missions to the United Nations. There is more of a United Nations process that I will let one of the lawyers address. Additionally, we have reached out to and been talking with the Belgian ambassador in the United States, with the Belgian foreign ministry. We've communicated direct, we have attempted to communicate directly to the new Belgian prime minister. And we've got some other specific questions about that. But right now I'm going to go back to the questions from the reporters in the orders, in the order that they have come in. Um, from Morgan Windsor at ABC International. Morgan, I'm combining a couple of your questions. She wanted to know, has anyone been able to physically see and speak with Paul in person since he was illegally detained 
And is there any idea as to what the condition Paul is in and what conditions in which he are being held? Corrine and Lise, I'm gonna direct those questions to you to start off with, please. So um, there were a couple consular visits from the Belgian uh, embassy in Rwanda. They wanted to see him when he was still, before he was moved to the, to the current prison that he is in. And they actually saw him right before he was transferred. So since, and this was on, I believe, September 7th, 16 or 17th. So for about a month since he's been to the, to the new place, to the new prison, he has not been, um, no, no one from the Belgian embassy has been able to go visit him. As a matter of fact, um, they're still waiting for an approval from the Rwandan government to go and visit him. Thank you. I'm going to, um, I'm just looking at the questions and seeing if we can combine a couple of them to get, um, who, that are asking essentially the same thing. Um, one of the next questions is, have we reached out to the United States government? And yes, um, we have. Anais, if you could talk a little bit about the fact that we've had cooperation both from several congressional offices and the State Department. Yes, uh, so we've been working hard here in Washington, DC, trying to get more uh, people to support our cause and our struggle to release that. And that State Department, they've been very cooperative and they've been following our case very closely. Um, we've also been working with uh, several uh, Congress representative and the senator's office and trying to put together briefings for staffers to inform them of what ha what's happening in the hopes that actions can be taken in the near future. Um, the next question, um, I think that this needs to go to um, both Monsieur Larkin and Philippe, if you can help me translate. Um, are we viewing the Bel Belgians' decision to share the confidential documents as a sign of their support for Ms. Mr. Rusesa Begina? And then Peter, second question, are we getting any legal support from US authorities? Vincent, tu comprends la question? Donc la, la question c'est de savoir si, dans, selon ton expérience, d'avocats en Belgique. Est-ce que le fait que le juge ait accepté de partager le, le dossier euh, est un signe du fait qu'il supporte M. Roussi Sabagina? Qu'il supporte, ça c'est peut-être un grand mot, mais en tout cas qu'il pense que la procédure euh, n'est pas tout à fait normal par rapport à son arrestation, ça c'est évident. Je crois que les juges en Belgique ont cette interrogation du fait de savoir s'ils ne, ne sont pas, et c'est rare pour un juge de dire ça, instrumentalisés par le pouvoir rwandais. Et une des... Enfin, vous dites peut-être déjà ça. So, it is, it is actually something very important, the fact that they... Um, allow Maître Lurkin to have access to the file. Th there might be a fear from the judges that they are being instrumentalized by the Rwandan authorities. So uh, it, is, it is not a form of support. I don't think the, the, the Belgian authorities will support necessarily Mr. Roussesabagina, but it is clearly an indication that they do not support the kind of procedure uh, and the way he has been abducted and the way things seem to be unfolding right now. Mais il ne faut pas sous-estimer le pouvoir du pouvoir rwandais en Belgique parce que je suis parti samedi et le jeudi, ils ont arrêté trois Rwandais, dont mes clients. Don't underestimate the influence of the Rwandan authorities on the Belgian authorities because I left on Saturday and the following Thursday, they arrested three Rwandans in Belgium, two of whom are my clients. C'est un dossier qui était ouvert il y a cinq ans, où mon client n'avait jamais été interrogé. Et ils ont décidé non seulement de l'interroger, mais de le mettre en prison deux jours avant qu'on ne parte voir poser sa baguine. Donc, 
ne sous-estimons pas l'adversaire. Let's not underestimate the opponent. We are talking here of a file which had been inactive for five years. And the client had never been examined for all this period. And all of a sudden, he's not only examined, but put into prison. So let's not underestimate the opponent. Monsieur Lurquin, do you think that the arrest of the Rwandans in Belgium was retaliation for your representing Paul Rosses Vagina? Philippe? Karine, Anaïs, can you help me out? I'm happy to go. Uh, Vincent, est-ce que vous pensez que l'arrestation de, de ces trois Rwandais uh, dernièrement, uh, est-ce que c'était en réponse uh, à, au, um, au fait que mon père a été arrêté uh, au Rwanda et est-ce que quelqu'un est en train de faire aujourd'hui? Il n'y a personne en Belgique qui croit le contraire, mm -hmm. évidemment. Yes. It was et ça, a... c'est évidemment quelque chose de grave, mais donc ça veut dire que à l'intérieur de la magistrature, ils ne sont pas tous du même côté. Et donc, c'est un peu pour ça qu'on doit rappeler aussi qui était votre père, euh, parce que euh, c'est quand même quelqu'un qui était, qu'on le présentait comme un, comme un héros, qui a sauvé des gens, qui a sauvé des vies, euh, mais c'est il y a 25 ans. Donc, on doit reprendre un peu tout ça pour, pour essayer de, de faire comprendre aux Belges euh, qu'il faut soutenir euh, la justice et non pas euh, faire ce que l'on a fait il y a trois jours, mais c'est clair que c'est grave en Belgique. Yes, it is evident that uh, this was a retaliation on the fact that uh, Dad and the Belgians are trying to support Vincent in uh, seeing my father in Kigali. And so this is clear. In Belgium, it's clear that the Rwandans are retaliating uh, and because of the arrest and also using their political pressure to do that. Uh, what's happening is, you know, within the um, uh, legal space in Belgium, there is some uh, division where some people are more working with the um, Rwandans, for lack of a better word, instead of following the judicial process. So what happened uh, last week when these three Rwandans were arrested out of nowhere is an example of that that there are some friction within the, the Belgian system that allowed this to happen when it shouldn't have happened. And um, a lot, all of this is really a response of the one in government into kind of the fact that Belgium has already tried to take a stand on this issue. It is important to know that, you know, what my father is known for is, um, is what he's here is in his, what he did in the, during the genocide that was over 20 years ago. And so in Belgium, and he's known to have safe, safe people, he's a good man, a man of principle, a human rights advocate. But people in Belgium need to be educated to learn about that. Not all the people know. So within the judicial system, people don't understand the context that we're working in and have and some of this have allowed um, the arrest of these three people. But at the same time, there's also part of the system that is supporting and that wants to do the right thing as in, um, the, the derogatory commissions and other things like that. Thank you, Anais. Um, the next question is for uh, Peter Robinson. Could you comment, and it comes from Sophie Neiman, a journalist who's been covering this situation closely. Could you comment from a legal perspective about the um, decision, although I think technically it was a suggestion, not a decision, to merge Mr. Recessivagina's trial with that of 18 alleged members of the um, FLN, the Front, Front Liberation Nationale. And what does this mean for the case? Should it go forward in Rwanda? Peter, if you could take this one. Yes, thank you, Kitty. There has been no decision to merge the cases yet, but the prosecutor general has announced his intention to seek to have those cases merged. That requires the approval of the court and that has not yet been applied for or has been granted. The procedure that we'll be seeing over the next few weeks is that charges will formally be lodged against Paul Rosas of Begina and he will be brought to court to answer those charges. At that time, the issue of joining his case with others will be discussed and debated and decided. But at this stage, uh, his case is proceeding on its own. Can we talk a little bit just about the logistic, the problems logistically 
that any merging of the cases would bring up? And Brian, maybe you want to take a take so, that. Yeah, thank you, Peter. Thank you, Kitty. E even logistically, Rwanda right now is a country that is under COVID lockdown. They have a um, curfew at 6 p.m. every night. The courts were completely closed and everything was done mm -hmm. on video up until Paul's case. They actually cleaned out a courthouse and sanitized it, we understand, before Paul's case. It is a very small courthouse mm -hmm. and a very small courtroom. At this point in time, it doesn't seem it would even be logistically possible to have 18 defendants plus Paul plus all of their lawyers, plus the judges, plus the prosecutors in one place at the same time. We have no idea even physically how that would work, much less uh, the legal details and consequences. So that seems like a, a very um, strange situation for the legal system to be putting itself in right now. Thank you, Brian. And the next question comes from um, uh, radio or Mori, and pardon me, Monsieur, uh, from the radio station, if I butchered the name, I did not intend to. Um, and this goes back to the the origination of this whole situation, the kidnapping, the arrest, um, the hijack, the he hi well hijacking of the plane, or at least hijacking of Mr. Recessa Begina who got onto a plane and did not know the destination. Um, could you please talk, uh, Peter, about the illegality of the arrest, the kidnapping, Mr. Recessa Begina being held for three days, locked up and blindfolded so that he didn't know where he was. Could you talk about, is that a normal way for a Belgian citizen to be taken from his country into Rwanda to stand trial. Is this normal? Is this the way they've held, they've dealt with other Rwandan cases abroad? Yeah, I think the answer is obvious um, that it's not only abnormal, but illegal. So if you have a person residing in another country, you, you can obtain that person for criminal charges through extradition or deportation. And Paul Rusesa Begina was living in San Antonio uh, throughout the whole COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And so if the Rwandan government wanted to legally obtain him for prosecution, they should have made a request to the United States government to either extradite or deport him. The United States government has granted deportation almost every time Rwanda has asked when they have sought people for cases involving involvement in the genocide. So if there was a legitimate case against Paul, it could have been presented to the United States authorities and they would likely have extradited or deported him if it was a bona fide case. But instead they didn't do that. Instead they lured him to a place where they could take him by force and bring him to Rwanda, which is completely illegal. The remedies for that are normally before the court in which you appear. So you would, when you go to court in Rwanda, you would say, I've been arrested illegally. I need to be released. This prosecution is null and void. That wasn't done because he doesn't have lawyers who are fighting for him. And so the lawyers never brought up that issue before the Rwandan court. We have uh, already made a complaint to the United Nations Special Rapporteur on Torture concerning the way Paul was treated uh, after his arrest, as you've mentioned, being tied up and blindfolded and kept incommunicado for three days. We plan to make further complaints to the United Nations Working Group on Arbitrary Detention to ask for a finding that his arrest was illegal and his subsequent detention remains illegal to this day. We also have some other ideas of other courts that we may try to go to to get some relief from this illegal arrest. Thank you. I would like to add that we haven't forgotten that Gainjet bears some complicity. Gainjet plane, a Gainjet plane transported him. D the Dubai airport has not 
let any tapes be released of him getting on the plane. The Kigali airport has not shown any tapes of him getting off the plane. We don't know who was on the manifest. We haven't forgotten that Gainjet has questions to answer. We hope that the media also has not forgotten that Gainjet has questions to answer. Additionally, the Dubai government really has never said what happened at the airport or the UAE government has not said what happened in the airport in, in Dubai. And this is not the first time that a Belgian citizen has disappeared from the airport in Dubai. There is more examination and more investigative journalism that needs to be done relative to both Gainjet and the airport in Dubai. Um, additionally, we've had questions about what have the Belgians done when we've asked them why haven't the Belg why hasn't the Belgian government been stronger in demanding that their illegally arrested resident be returned home? And Anais and Karine, I'd like to direct that one to you since you have been talking with the Belgian State Department. So the Belgians are still looking into the kidnapping. Um, apparently, they need more evidence of that be of the of how he got to Rwanda. In addition to that, um, they are the Belgian government. The Bel Belgian didn't have a government up until October first. So a lot of the, the the processes have been stopped in relation to the Belgian taking a position, a public position on the matter, and um, and they're waiting for for the cabinet of the of the new prime minister as well as the full government to be formed in order to further investigate the case and make a decision. And have they specifically addressed, um, have they talked with you when you've raised the question with them about Paul being denied access to his Belgian attorneys and his international attorneys? And have they given you any kind of deadline for their investigation? They have not. And have they given you any idea about what other facts they need to learn before they will move. So they were waiting for, Vint, for uh, Maître Lurquin and Dad to speak in order to hear directly from Dad what happened. However, Lur Maître Lurquin wasn't allowed to go see Dad. So even that was um, stopped from happening from the Rwandans. Um, uh, Peter, uh, Peter, I'm going to send this one back to you to speak on behalf of all of the international lawyers. Um, the question is uh, from one of the journalists who covers uh, who covers Rwanda quite a bit, even Mugisha. Rwanda's systems require foreign lawyers to apply at the Bar Association to represent a client in Rwanda. Have you sought the authorization from the Bar Association? If yes, what was their response? If no, I know that Monsieur Lurkan did cover this, but Peter, if you can kind of go back and summarize the problems with the Bar Association. Uh, yes. So uh, Vincent, as he has explained to you, has applied to, uh, through, with the Bar Association to be allowed to represent Paul Rosas of Begina. And he spent the week looking for the batonnier, the president of the Bar Association with no success. Uh, and Philippe also has presented his papers to uh, the batonnier of the Rwandan Bar Association. The rest of us intend to do that once Gatera Gashambana is accepted as the lawyer for Paul Rosas Sabagina and we can join their, that team. Thank you. Mais comme, comme Philippe l'a dit également, donc son bâtonnier est intervenu. Le bâtonnier de Bruxelles est intervenu de manière très claire quand j'étais au Rwanda. Il demandait une série de documents qu'on lui a donnés et le bâtonnier a demandé que le bâtonnier d'Ouganda nous aide à voir M. Roussi Sabagina. Donc effectivement, l'ensemble des autres bâtonniers pourraient peut-être faire pression. So, both the bâtonnier of the Quebec Bar and the bâtonnier of the Bressel Bar 
intervened with Kavahuganda, the Batoni of the Kigali Bar Association, to request the, the necessary authorization for us. We're not talking of doing a trial here, but we're talking of, of seeing a client. So, and, and the, the, the necessary papers were sent, the, 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 the authorizations, the request for authorizations were sent to Kavuraganda from, from both Quebec and Belgium. And despite that, there has never, despite that, there has never been a positive answer. C'est vrai que les, les, les bâtonniers, peut-être de différents pays, pourraient intervenir auprès du bâtonnier Kavaruganda pour lui dire que le but de l'avocat, ce n'est pas d'interdire à l'avocat de voir son client, mais de lui permettre de le faire. Um, he calls for other bâtonniers, who are the head of uh, bars association from other countries, to also intervene and ask why a lawyer would prevent another lawyer, a fellow lawyer, to see his own client. So there's a call to action to all um, bâtonniers and head of bar association to uphold. And just to be clear, this has not happened to um, Philippe when you have been in Rwanda before, you have not been barred from seeing, you have not been prevented from seeing your clients, correct? Never, never. This has only happened because you have uttered the name Rusesa Begina, which is the name that cannot be said in Rwanda, according to Monsieur Lurkin. Look, I did not receive I did not receive a letter to that effect, but I don't see any other reasons because this is the only thing that changed since last time I went there. Just for Metro Lurkin, since five years that has that his client has been freed, the only thing that changed in the meantime is the fact that he was uh, appointed by the family of Mr. Rousse Sabagina to represent him. So, of course, he did not receive a letter from the Rwandan authorities telling him that, you know, uh, if but you choose to represent Mr. Rousse Sabagina, you have this kind of problems, but there is a clear link um, between the two. I just, note of moderator privilege, I am not, I can't go to Rwanda because the president has said that I must be killed. But I have heard that in the Hotel Meal Colleen, if you go to the gift shop, there are no copies of the movie Hotel Rwanda in the gift shop. Paul Rusesa Begina's book, An Ordinary Man, is not available in the gift shop of the hotel that he saved during the genocide, along with those one thousand two hundred and sixty eight people and I have also been told that if you ask about Mr. Rusesa Begina in the hotel meal Colleen the staff will look very scared and turn away from you I've only heard this I don't know it to be true but I think that based upon Monsieur I did not ask I don't know that I did ask <laughs> We've heard this from a few people over the years, and I apologize for my digression, but I think that it's further illustration of the fact that this is not a normal trial. This is being done for retaliation and as a political move against a humanitarian who has spent the last 15 years speaking out on behalf of people who have had their human rights violated, journalists who have been killed, political dissidents who have been jailed. And I think we know that that's why this trial is being handled the way it is. Brian, I'm gonna throw it back to you for wrap up. Thank you very much, Kitty. I'm gonna pick up where Kitty left off there and um, just go through this a little bit more to bring things together. From a legal perspective on this case, Paul Rusesa Begina was kidnapped in Dubai. He was brought by illegal rendition to Rwanda against his will. That is illegal under international law. 
he was arrested and is being detained illegally in Rwanda. Again, illegal under international law because he was not brought there legally. That is the absolute center point of this case. Paul Rusesa Begina simply should not be there. Any of the other legal issues should not be discussed in that context. We'll go beyond that though, and we have spoken beyond that today. That's still the primary issue. But even if you accept that Paul is there and on trial, this is clearly also an illegal and completely unfair trial process in Rwanda. Paul's family and team, along with many, many past precedents in Rwandan cases, show that a fair and impartial trial is simply not going to happen in this case. Going very briefly through that timeline again, Paul was effectively tortured for the first three days he was in captivity with his hands and feet bound and a blindfold on for that time. He's been held incommunicado from his family and from his family designated lawyers for much of the last 53 days and has only had a handful of contacts with the outside world. He has no access to his legal team until just this week, we're beginning to get access. The Rwandan government has consistently and continues to put up new blocks and new barriers every time a lawyer tries to see Paul, whether that is Katera Gashabana, a respected lawyer in Kigali, or whether it is various members of the international legal team, including Vincent Larcon and uh, Philippe La Rochelle. The only lawyers who have represented Paul in court are from the Rwandan government. We fully believe they are representing the interests of the Rwandan government and they have not been representing Paul's legal interest. As Kitty said, we know why this is happening. Paul Rusesa Begina is seen by Rwandan President Kagame as his key political enemy, not because Paul is running against him for office, but because Paul speaks out in public. He speaks about human rights abuses. He speaks about the real situation in Rwanda. He speaks in ways that people inside of Rwanda are unable to speak in criticizing the current government that is there. That's what brought him to this position. And unfortunately, that's what says that Paul has no chance of a fair trial. I want to thank everyone who's joined us. I want to thank members of the family, Anais, Lise, Karine, for being here. Excuse me. Thank you very much, Peter, Vincent, and Philippe for giving the legal perspective, and Kitty Kurth and Kevin Lampy for putting this press conference together. Thank you all very much for joining us, too. Thank you and goodbye. If you have any further questions, you can send them via email. We appreciate your attention and your covering this matter. Thank you very much.